Okay, so hello. So this is a long time no see, and then today I'm gonna I'm gonna try to try to explain the chapter twelve about the spatial interpolation, which is another interesting chapter for the this spatial data science. So as you can see here, spatial interpolation is actually kind of estimating the value of the spatial continuous variable. For the special location, so that means maybe for example there is a, some kind of a like a, this kind of boundary, and then a, there is a, some of the measure, some of the location we actually do the actual object observe something or measurement, and then our question now is the what about the value for the how can we value for this location can be estimated. Based on the our observation value of the, this little these five dots, so how how these five dots gonna be affected to determine the this kind of a value? Actually, usually depending on the distance distance between the this point and this location observed location. So, literally, it's a kind of a predictions, and then a kind of a simulation of the continuous phenomena. So by using the, these kind of things, we can actually estimate any random location points like this. And then whenever we try to do the do these things repeatedly and then continuously, maybe all of the these our boundary uh, our spaces within the this boundary, all of the all of the value in the random location within the this space can be estimated. The value can be estimated, right? That's the how special interpolation is about. So it is actually kind of a missing value problem, also predicting and estimating the value based on the our observations at the, some some specific locations. So actually, chapter twelve will discuss it about the, how we can do these kind of things, right? So we're gonna start. We're gonna discuss about the creating things, and then. As an interpolation techniques, one of the uh, most commonly used the kind of a technique is the creating. And then uh, we also try to deal with uh, maybe what is called the inverse distance weight method for the, as a kind of a special interpolation method. And then the creating is a kind of like a more, more kind of like a, a considering the more external factors or external noise variable to estimate the, some of the, some of the values for the any random location within our special boundaries. So that's the, what the special location is about. And then when we scroll down here, in here, in this example, actually they, uh, others presents about the NO2 measurement for the, these are the actually each station. Maybe I would say about the weather station and then each weather station locations they actually measured about what is called the NOT, NO2, like a nitro, nitro di, uh, dioxide kind of a concentration level gonna be tested. And then when we mapping these things, it looks like this. So maybe dark blue means is the high, uh, less concentrated. And then a the light blue is the highly concentrated NO2 kind of area. So it is a kind of a station location that measure the NO2 kind of a level uh, in the German uh, German uh, country. So in German, so in Germany. So I would say, and then uh, we, if we want to interpolate, this is a very important word. So we, if we want to interpolate, we need to decide where we want to go. So maybe do we, do we want to estimate the sum of the NO2 level in here or maybe in here, in here? So, so this kind of a depending the where we have to estimate the, those values actually determines about the how we can interpolate these kind of values. Okay. So let's go scroll down. So one of the commonly straightforward kind of a method is the what is called the industry inverse. Uh, inverse distance weighted interpolations. Hello. So. Hello. Yeah. So I just started, so you can just 
yeah, watch these things. So actually, okay, for maybe for her, maybe I just briefly explain about the special interpolation is the matter of a prediction of the missing value, missing value. Okay. And then and then we actually try to talk about the first example about the these things. So each each point represents about the station location, which measure the this kind of a nitro dioxide kind of a level, concentration level. And then uh and then what we can do is uh, one our next question is how we can estimate the value of the NO2 level in here or maybe in here or in here or in here like a random locations how we can define the those kind of uh, estimate value depending on the these measurement location measurement at the station locations one of the very straightforward method is what is called the inverse distance weighted interpolation method here so it's a kind of a weighted kind of a distance. Usually this weighted is a kind of a difference between the distance uh, from the, between the, those two points. And then based on that, what is the basic assumption of the inverse distance method is maybe here is the kind of our observed point, location point. And then this is where we wanted to estimate the value. Maybe closer, close, Close uh, the location with the close close to the this location, the station with the close to the this location can be affected the value of the this random locations. So maybe in this one, for example, it is uh, a little bit far away from the this location point. That means this value of the this locations can be less affected to the determine the value of the dislocations. Do you understand what I mean? That is what is called the inverse distance method. So depending on the distance from between the those two between the points, that actually determines about the estimation of the value and then how 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 those things those value gonna be estimated. So that's the kind of thing. And then based on the this kind of inverse distance method, like IDW, like the G-step packages, it is very simple. So one means is that there is a no kind of a, another weighted uh, external variable going to be over, overlaid in the, this kind of a map. So just only using the this uh, station measurement, this is a kind of a, a value result. So maybe closer of the, this, maybe around the, this location, like uh, let me, Highlighting this one. Okay, for in this case, in this location, maybe very closing uh this location close to the this station, actually value of the this location gonna be determined by the this station rather than the rest of the this station, rest of the station in the Germany. So that's the how inverse distance weighted method is about. And then what we can do is the what about the sample variogram? Because a sample variogram is a kind of like showing the kind of a variance of the estimate, how we can estimate the value for the based on the possible pairs of the locations. Okay, so so by using uh, by using the these kind of a variogram kind of a functions, and then uh, we can actually set up the NO two, and then whenever we have a random location, depending on the depending on the this kind of a distance, depending on the these kind of distances, this, this number actually represents about the number of pairs. Pairs between uh, between the that random location and the station in this case. So that is the 67 possible pair can be found in the this distance level. And then uh, that is the kind of a, uh, kind of a uh, uh, based on the distance, we can actually estimate about the value of the uh, value of the this kind of thing, and then the intensity of the of the points patterns in the in the in the, based on the this sample variogram. So that's the kind of plot, and then uh, we can also some kind of optimizing purposes. 
we can actually choose the sum of the maximum distance, like a cutoff value, and then an interview width, which is the cutoff value divided by 15. So maybe cutoff value is a kind of, like of our basic grid side, like a 10 kilometer by 10 kilometer grid is the our basic side, uh, basic unit grid of the dead German uh, images uh, map. And then we can divide by 15 is almost across the 10,000. Uh, 10, and then based on the these cutoff values, we can actually standardize a little bit more kind of a normalize that is kind of a like like a, like a, these kind of a Gaussian more like a Gaussian level kind of a variograms okay and then the how we can fit in the variogram model so that means that we by using the fit variogram we can actually draw the this kind of a line based on the these things and then uh, when you can see here you can find that the there is actually kind of a flatten out in the certain distances, right? This is actually what is called the seal point. And then uh, this one is actually kind of a, like a bottom kind of a point. So actually when you, uh, maybe let me check, could you see the, this Google, Google bar? Yes, we can. Yeah. So when we looking at the, these kind of things, we can say that at the bottom one is the nugget, and then the bottom one, like across the tangent, asymptotic to the sum of the value that is actually zero level, and then uh, until to the to the before the zero level, this one actually represents about the, how those pair of the points is highly significantly correlated to the one another. So until to the zero to the these things is the kind of a ranges. For the for that actually representing the high significant correlation between the those pairs of the points to the estimate the values. Okay, so these are the kind of a basic structure of the variation uh, variogram plot. It is not explaining here, so I just presenting those things to you. And then, and then next one is a kind of a kind of a quicking kind of an interpolation. So this one is a kind of like a more kind of a commonly or stiff um, commonly used for the technique when we try to estimate the, some of the value in the some random specific locations. So in here, as you can see here, by using the some of the creep functions, you can actually like, uh, like we did for the same thing for the inverse distance method, we can actually easily estimate about the predictive value of the NO2 level throughout the, those kind of a base, uh, basic station points. But the thing is, what is the good about the cracking uh, is we can also aggregate the, those kind of a station kind of a values as a kind of a mean or maybe mode or medium value. And then after that, by using the, those kind of aggregate value, we can actually create in the, another creaking value, like an aggregate value. So that is what is called the block creaking, which means rather than the rather than the estimating about the, these values as a kind of a random locations across in the continuous uh, continuous spaces, we can actually aggregate the, those kind of a, a value based on the, some specific boundary blocks, like uh, their states within the Germany. So maybe if we can aggregate the, our measurement, measure the value by the, these, these uh, states within the German, uh, in the Germany, and then we can actually create in the, those value depending on the, those, uh, those aggregate kind of uh, values. And then when we try to looking at the, some of the standard error kind of things to, to validate the, those creaking estimated, but you can see here, in terms of the sample, just simple sampling mean of the standard error and then the creaking one, you can see the creaking one is the produced a much better fit compared to the simply sampling or averaging of the observations. Cause the creaking actually consider about the weighted distance between the pairs, possible pairs of the location to measure the any random location value estimates. 
So that's the reason why when we actually testing about the standard error, tweaking is a much lower standard error, which means we can have a better fit of the value of the NO2 level in this case. Okay. And then conditional uh, simulation means is kind of like a, we can try to do the, what is the good about the quicking is the, we can do about the simulating depending on the, uh, depending on the, some of the, some of the special value kind of a simulation technique, like a Gaussian or exponentials or those kind of things. And then we can actually simulating the, all of the, this kind of uh, estimation value throughout the two spaces. So by using the, this kind of a number of simulation arguments like this here, and then a number of max is a 13, here we can actually try to keep producing the simulation result depending on the, our NO2 estimate and then a station variable. And then we will, we will find that the, there is a still kind of a specific pattern going to be constant in this case concentration of the NO2. Like uh, for example, in here, right? These are the kind of uh, all of the general common pattern we can find about the most of the, these regions. Actually, regardless of the number of simulation, this region has a kind of a high concentration of the NO2 or maybe up here, right? Yeah. Maybe there is a, some kind of a slightly differences between the estimating here at the bottom one, because the simulation three and five actually estimate about the highly concentrated value for this. But maybe the other, the other four simulation actually have a, a little bit lower kind of estimates of the, uh, of the, those NO2 concentrations depending on the simulations, okay? So throughout the, this kind of a repeated iteration of the, these simulations, we can actually find about find that the, how quicking is the can be barely our quicking result can be validated across to the different iteration process, and then uh, those are the actual kind of a, another kind of a techniques about the, how we can validate the, our uh, our quicking estimation result. Okay. And then what is the trend model means? Actually, it is about the, okay, so far we only estimate about the, only using the NO2 concentration of the station location, right? But the thing is we can also thinking about the maybe NO2 gonna be mostly caused by the traffic. And then a traffic can be determined more intense in the density population area. In that case, maybe either traffic congestion level or maybe population density level can be affected to the NO2 level, right? Because uh, then what is the trend model for the quick do is if there is uh, other external factors that we think gonna be affected to the, our outcome estimation, in that case, we can actually include the, those kind of a variable as a external effect control factor to estimate the, our outcome, uh, outcome, uh, as, uh, outcome values. Okay, so so to what how how we can do that? It is very simple. Just kind of a, in this uh, in this part is uh, just kind of a showing the kind of a sample, uh, just kind of a special uh, special data processing that we already know about the previous section. Sec uh, chapters, and then we can actually plotting the some of the uh, density kind of uh, estimations in here like this, and then we can overlay this one to the NO2 kind of uh, estimation values. How we can do that? It is very simple. We just try to analyze the this regression model, and then after that, we just creating it here. Like NO2 is actually also have a weighted by the this square root population density. And then this one actually shows about the only, if we only creating do the creating based on the NO2 level, 
it shows about the only near only values for the station close to the station value gonna be the kind of a, a little bit uh, estimated. But the thing is when we try to do the kind of a population density as a kind of a weighted variable, we can actually overlay those things together. That means our pattern of the end of two level gonna be the slightly more variation, shows the variations. Okay. So I think that this is the kind of a very simple summary of the special interpolation. Cause it's a very simple chapter actually. It is actually a matter of the estimation of the values. And then and then some of the kind of how we can estimate the those value in the random location and then how we can run the R code. I think that that's it. Okay, thank you. Uh, can, can I just ask some uh, 